Hi everyone, welcome to the Muster Drill. I'm Scott and I wanted to do a quick follow-up video about the Oasis of the Seas Genie and the Elevator. Hi everyone, welcome back. So I'm in Williamsburg, Virginia, spending a couple of days before I get on the Carnival Magic in nearby Norfolk. I'm really looking forward to this upcoming cruise. Now I've been on the Magic before, I've been on the Breeze, but I've never sailed from Norfolk, so I'm really excited about this opportunity to sail from a new port. You know, I've been hearing a lot of horror stories about how difficult boarding is and parking and all this other stuff so i'll be bringing you updated information to see if carnival has worked out any of the bugs yet or if we're still just gonna have to deal with first world problems um so anyway so the reason why i'm doing this quick video is i've had so many comments about this and this whole situation on board the oasis of the seas with the genie and the elevator that i really just wanted to talk a little bit more specifically about that situation so there's been all kinds of comments some people I guess have misunderstood the situation or the circumstances maybe they're not familiar with what the genie service is or what the perks are that come with a sky loft suite or I mean a sky level suite or whatever so in any event some people have felt like it was you know some people felt like I was making a big deal out of an actual medical emergency which is what I had mentioned that the elevator said to us when it was redirecting other people uh, you know other people just seemed to really feel like it was a bad situation and it wasn't right and then I had an uh, uh, I had some comments from somebody recently who is a frequent sky uh, suite guest on board uh, Royal Caribbean ships and the statement that he had made to me it was he was able to actually communicate with a couple of genies on board an Oasis class ship and he had mentioned to them about the situation and they had assured him based on the comments he left me that that was not the policy and that you know there was not a policy to for genies to do that In any event Regardless of the situation, regardless of whether or not you understood what was going on or what was happening, I really just wanted to say this. Now, regardless of what you think about the situation or whether or not you really understand what was going on while I was on that elevator, this is what I need to point out to everyone. The genie has a card and at the each elevator bank on every floor, there's a card reader, a proximity card reader. So the genies have those. They go to that card reader and they scan that card. The genies themselves have absolutely no control over the elevator. When they scan that card, there is a pre-programmed set of actions and events that are supposed to occur in that, with that elevator when they scan the card they have no control over it. Also, in my situation, the elevator was on its way to the 16th floor. So, the genie goes with his star or sky suite guests, he scans that card, the elevator stops, and it goes back to where he is, and lets those people get, so get on, and then it resets any floors that were punched in there. So the genie is free then, to get on to that elevator, push whatever floor his guests are going to, and if you're on that elevator, you're going where they went first. And that's where I have the problem. As a travel agent, I understand about paying for perks, and, and I also understand, probably from Royal Caribbean's position, is that if you are paying the kind of money that it takes for you to book a sky-level suite, then yeah, you should probably get the perk of not having to wait for an elevator. When you look at this logically, you can't really see it from any other perspective. Royal Caribbean as a company has created a policy where when the genie scans that card, if somebody is on that elevator, they don't care. So think of it as in terms of steerage, 
versus first class. And I guarantee you that Royal Caribbean has not made a mistake or an oversight here. They have decided that if you've paid $37,000 for your suite, and your genie goes to the elevator and scans that card, they've already decided, they've already had their engineers program those elevators to do a very specific thing. And that is, even if somebody is on it, even if it's in motion, they don't care. It's gonna grab it from wherever it's going, bring it back to where they are, and then make you go to where they're going first, even if you were already in the elevator. That's the issue, that's the problem. So I just wanna sum this situation up by saying whether the cruise lines are selling internet packages that they know don't work, or soda packages that they know that won't be available, they made a decision to program those elevators so that when those genies scan those cards, it grabs that elevator no matter what. Now there's six elevators there. Why does it pick an elevator that already has people in it that's already in motion to another place? I don't know. Maybe it's a, you know, maybe it's a limitation of the program. I don't know. But the bottom line is, is that in my opinion, they're fine with the idea that when that genie scans that card, there might be people in that elevator already and those people are gonna be forced to delay arriving to where they were going in favor of the people who paid more money for their cabin. And it's just not right. This person who commented on, on the video, he mentioned that he had contacted the, uh, contacted some genies and that they had said to him that that wasn't the policy. But the bottom line is, is that that's definitely what happened. So, it, you know, maybe they're not willing to admit that that's the policy, but that's definitely the policy. You know, it's kind of like when you're on a carnival ship and the internet's not working and you complain, the, the crew automatically say, oh, they're working on it. I've been on multiple carnival ships in the last couple of months, and no matter what ship I'm on, no matter when it is, if somebody complains about the internet, that's the same, the, the crew say the same thing, no matter what ship they're on, no matter when it is. So you, can, so you can't tell me that that isn't what they're told to say. And then if somebody complains a little bit more, then they offer to cancel the service and refund it. But anything other than admitting that the service is, is you know, that they know the service isn't gonna work, but they're selling it to you anyway. But you can't tell me that it's an accident or that it's an oversight and Royal Caribbean doesn't know that when that genie scans that card, there might be people on the elevator. Surely they fathomed that. They've just decided that it doesn't matter to them, especially when you're dealing with people who paid a crazy obscene amount of money for their cabin. So that's really all I'm going to say about it. That's, I, you know, I just really wanted to, to clarify it because it seems like some people weren't sure what the service was and they were getting on me because they thought that I had a problem with a med medical emergency, which isn't the case. And then other people were talking about how they thought that, you know, that there was an oversight or that the genie themselves were in control of that. Um, you know, they were in control of that service and that they were making the elevator do it independently, but that's not the case. You know, maybe that was a feature or a function that was built into the elevator by the manufacturer and that Royal Caribbean, you know, wasn't able to change the language. Or maybe that Royal Caribbean feels like medical priority override sounds a little better than more important passenger override. Anyway, so I'm down here on the York waterfront. It's one of my favorite places to be in uh, the Colonial Williamsburg area, uh, you know, especially in the evening. As you can see out here, um, you know, on the horizon there is where the York River meets the Chesapeake Bay. And then over here is the Route 17 bridge, as well as the Yorktown waterfront. It's just an amazing, amazing place to be in the evening, especially in an evening like this. Now it's really hot down here. It was 101 degrees here today. I couldn't believe it. It was so hot and I wore a black shirt. So I've got another day here before I head to Norfolk on Saturday to get on the Carnival Magic. It's a six day cruise. I'm really looking forward to it. Can't wait to bring everybody along on the Magic. And you know, I can't wait for that Norfolk sail out. Definitely something new on my list. 
So I think that's gonna do it for today's video. Thank you very much for tuning in. And if you like this video, don't forget to click that like button. And then don't forget to click the subscribe button. It won't cost you anything. You click it once and you're done and it'll really help us out a lot. And then don't forget to click that notification bell so that you know every time we upload a new video. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.